While browsing AliExpress for some of the newer styles of LED filament lamps, I decided to buy a few different types just to check them out and see if there's anything new. And it turns out that these are very, very new. I've never seen filaments like this before, the way they've implemented it. And uh, this could be the next generation of LED bulb for this specialist application of the small decorative bulbs. So this is a set of 10 bulbs and their colours. So say for instance, well let's uh, get the vibrant pink one in and we'll screw it in and I'm going to warn you, there may be some flickering because there is no smoothing in these bulbs. So I'm going to screw it in and there's a bit of shimmer available on camera. Not so visible to the human eye, but uh, it is definitely visible in the camera. Um, and this filament has everything on it, it turns out, because while I was testing it and comparing it, I was actually had it in a string of these style of lamps. Now, this style of lamp usually has a rectifying system and the string of LEDs, but then a resistor in the base, and the base of it gets quite hot. I was playing about with them. I put several of these into a string, then I current limited it, and all these ones went out. It turns out that these bulbs require over 120 volt to light. These are the 220 volt um, and upwards version. But uh, it's interesting that they've got such a high voltage drop across the filament and it's revealed in the blue ones because you can actually see through it. Because it's not using phosphor, it's just the bare blue chips, you can see the circuitry underneath. So I think it's time to take a closer look at that. So I'll get the x-ray machine out and we can check that out right now. So here is the donor bulb, and here is the x-ray machine. Let's prepare to x-ray it right now. So I'll just lift the sensitive module out. Kiss the little lamp goodbye. Goodbye, little lamp. And then tappy tap tap. That works really well. Thanks, Eve. This is an amazing device. Okay, reverse engineering is complete. Let's explore with an image of the filament, a, a fuzzy image of the filament. It's very hard to get that close. Uh, here is the filament glowing gently with two 820K resistors and sears with it in the mains, just so I could get it to glow, and then take a little tiny mag magnifier and put it over it and actually see the chips to count number of LED chips, sections on them. Okay, I shall turn that off and tuck it out of the way and we can explore the filament. It's worth mentioning that the base did not have a resistor in it. This makes it very easy for the same factory that makes the glass ones, the glass bulbs with the uh, tungsten filaments in them. It means that they can just simply put this in in place of the tungsten filaments and use the same machines, which fits nicely with the fact it is, and you know, they are all currently still manufacturing the, the tungsten ones. So what do we have? In each of these filaments, we've got a crimpton end connection. We've got an 8.2K resistor at this end and two diodes. Bare diode chips that are basically just bonded onto the circuit board material. And then there's a couple of bus bar rails going down and then there's 15 LEDs, but it's not just simply 15 LEDs. Then there's a couple more diodes here that effectively forms a full bridge rectifier and then there's another 8.2k resistor. The dissipation of these resistors, initially I thought these might just be single 3 volt diodes but they're really not, they're 18 volts each. Um, I thought the dissipation of these were going to be high but in reality I've estimated that it is approximately 70 milliwatts per resistor. The whole thing runs fairly cool. Let me push that up there since it can, it can exist. Uh, at the same time as the schematic. Actually, you know what? You've seen that, so I'll just nudge this up and zoom a little bit closer. This will make things a little bit easier to see. So the, the equivalent schematic is two 8.2K resistors, one in each leg of the mains, a full bridge rectifier based on those discrete diode chips, and then 15... LED blocks with six chips in each, giving a total of 90 LEDs. The end of the circuit board looks like this. You've got that crimp in this little bit here. I thought that was solder initially, but it's not. It was just where they've crimped it in and they folded little wings round. So there's a slight dimple in there and that's caught the light and made it look three-dimensionally like a blob sticking up the way when it wasn't. There's the 8.2K resistor. 
there's the diode trips and there are the bus bars going down the side to the positive and negative bus bars. Now, one of the diodes has a little X in it. I guess that might be the positive, but I'm not sure. So I just chose that one just because it looked the most positive-ish. I, I took a brief look online, couldn't see that. I could see chips, beer chips being sold, but not uh, any close-up pictures like this. And then we've got the fairly well-spaced and very crystal clear LED blocks, gallium nitride LEDs, blue emitters that are normally covered in phosphor, so you wouldn't normally see them. Uh, in this case, because it is a blue LED, it's, I mean, they're all effectively blue LEDs with the phosphor to change colour. But uh, this one, because it's got just a slightly translucent gel over it uh, to protect it, that uh, lets you see all the chips inside. Each LED has a six sections. If we were to zoom in on one of the LEDs, you'd see the bond wire. And it starts off, there's, the, say, the negative rail. It, the bond wire goes on to the negative connection of the LED. And then for the positive connection, it goes to the negative of the next. And it just loops along. And then the other end, it goes on to the positive bus bar. But the LEDs themselves have basically got four, uh, should I say, six chips in one block. And a connection at diagonally opposing corners. And then the pattern the LEDs, the current zigzags across them. There's little separators and links for the LEDs. So it starts off with this LED, goes along to this one, this one, this one, this one, and then out to the next LED, and that is the six chips. It's very impressive. It's definitely an evolution, certainly for the low-intensity decorative LEDs. It's quite an impressive evolution. Um, I've ordered more from the same seller on AliExpress, different styles, but there's no guarantee that they're actually going to be identical because that's one of the problems is that you, you might order what look like identical bulbs, but they aren't. They Basically, they're from different vendors and some may just have a smoking hot resistor in the base and just a, a smattering of LEDs along, maybe even using LEDs as a bridge rectifier, which is a bit naughty. I think some of the bigger filaments do that. But that's it. Neat little bulbs. The last thing I'm going to do is show you them all lit up because the colours are nice. I'll do that right now. One moment, please. There we go. How nice is that? I tell you what, this is giving me huge vibes. So when I was young and we had the big olive-shaped vintage Christmas lights, uh, which I know they're fairly standard in America, but in the UK they were kind of like retro. It's all been tiny little lilliput type bulbs these days. But here we have red, we have white, which doesn't look white on camera because it's set for the coat of colour temperature. We've got the blue, we've got a orangey colour, a pink, a green, and one of the original sets out of this string, which is a, a longer filament and it's just the warm white. I think this one's got a resistor in the base and then the circuitry in the filament to support that, as opposed to these ones, which have everything in the one filament. But that's nice. Uh, they are really attractive bulbs. And when there's a not, I mean, you saw the flicker earlier on, there is flicker because there's, there's no smoothing. It's basically, it's only lit for part of the sine wave. If I was to shake this backwards and forwards, you'd see it's probably only lit for about half the time. But that's not actually too visible to the human eye. And there are ways around that. You could actually use a current limited supply like a capacitive dropper and a bridge rectifier and then a smoothing capacitor. And just basically you could give it a smooth DC supply, but pre-current limited. Because uh, earlier experiments with uh, a whole string of these, putting a capacitor in series just to drop the intensity, just out of interest, showed that, you know, they look visually quite bright, even down to an astonishingly low current, like a 100 nanofarad capacitor and sears the whole string. Pretty amazing. But that's it. Uh, really intriguing new LED filament. I've not seen one that has the resistors and the rectifier and the LEDs all in the one tiny, tiny little filament. Uh, what size is that? Let's get the... I'll give you it in millimetres first. 20 millimetres long, which is the equivalent of just over three quarters of an inch. This tiny little filament that just runs directly on the main supply. You get 120 volt versions, you get 240 volt versions, and you also get 12 volt and 3 volt versions that appears from different sellers. But that's it. Really impressive uh, evolution of the LED filaments. They're quite remarkable. They literally are just a drop-in replacement for the old tungsten filaments in the same lamp-making machines.